So, when I said earlier in the day about Facebook being a double-edged sword, on the one side, uh, we have this reach of a lot of potential people. There's a lot of people on Facebook. But the downside is, there's a lot of people on Facebook, also our competitors. So we need to reach the right people. If we were simply putting photos and videos and links and all of that, it goes out to the whole of Facebook. Everyone could see it, therefore no one sees it until we start to get followers and likes and all of that. And uh, a little bit of terminology here. So uh, over on so uh, every every network has uh, followers. Uh, Facebook uh, has um, followers but also likes kinda a little confusing however think of them both likes and followers on Facebook as the same thing as followers on every other network we saw on every other network um, a person that is a follower sees everything you post they've chosen sort of to subscribe to you on Twitter, on Google+, on Instagram, etc. They've followed you, they've subscribed to you, they see what you post. That's the traditional concept of that's the purpose of the follower. They want to follow you, they want to see what you've done. And that was also the case uh, on, on Facebook for a long time. What you would do is you would uh, get a follower and they're basically chosen to see everything that you're posting. That's not exactly the case anymore. Followers may see what you post. They may see what, what, you've, what you've shared, the video, the link, whatever. Now it's not like that anymore. And it's been like that for a few years, unfortunately. Uh, Facebook reasons it from the point of the consumer. If I'm a regular person, I want to see the stuff of my friends and family the funny cat picture or their vacation photo or what they had for breakfast that's what in theory Facebook says regular people that's how they use Facebook to see the stuff of their friends and family well we're a business Facebook says people don't want to see stuff from businesses so we're gonna promote and show and give press uh, preference and precedence to people's stuff consumer to consumer well that puts us businesses creators at a big disadvantage right they are actively basically Facebook is suppressing to various degrees what businesses show to people whereas the other networks if a person followed me as a business they're gonna see my stuff they've chosen to see it but Facebook has decided and because they're the 800 pound gorilla they're the industry leader they're the 200 billion users they're the 15 year old network they've decided well what I think what we think is best for our consumers is company stuff won't appear as often I don't know what stats it is I don't know what percentage it is no one really unless they work for Facebook and are under contract and such this is trade secrets proprietary information no one exactly knows what the formula is but I would no have no problem to say like 10% or less of my followers would see my stuff. I have a hundred followers on Facebook and not only do I have to deal with, well, 1% are the active ones. Well, 100 of those 10% are the ones that are even going to see it. So now I've got 10 people that see it. 1% of 10 is less than 1. So my numbers are so stacked against me on Facebook. And, you know, that's enough of, of a negativity to Facebook that I'm like, well, forget Facebook. I'm going to go elsewhere where I know my stuff will be seen by those that choose to follow me. But the problem is then you deny yourselves of that huge audience. So guess what? Facebook has an answer. Boosting posts lets you reach more of that audience. either the audience that has chosen to follow you already or a new audience and that does sound very annoying and very cynical and very like isn't that convenient I'm gonna have to boost posts oh I forgot to say boosting is code word for paying 
Well, that's convenient. I'm going to need to pay to reach more people. I have a thousand followers, but Facebook actively makes it that those thousand are not going to even see my stuff. Well, I need to pay to have them see it. So this is the thing that, yes, this part is true. No, Facebook will never charge regular people. Facebook charges businesses. And now it's a, it's a fact of doing business. Uh, if you first hear it for the first time and it sounds terrible and annoying and cynical and what a ripoff and I hate Facebook. Yeah, but in the real world, that billboard is not free. That um, ad on TV is not free. That um, you know, ad on the radio is not free. Those flyers that you're putting on people's windshields weren't free. And hopefully the person that is flipping the sign on the corner, you're paying minimum wage. So advertising and marketing in the real world is not free, and nowadays, advertising and marketing in social media is not free. But I said earlier, start with a dollar. Literally, with one dollar, you're able to start to reach more people. Those that have chosen to follow you, plus more people beyond who have followed you. And Facebook will then take any amount above a dollar, $50, $500, $1,000. They'll take as much money as you want to spend. Just like in the real world, the, that company will let you pay for as long as you want to have that billboard up there. One week, two weeks, two months, all year long. Sure, you, you have the cash for it. You've got the billboard. So I cover Facebook on the third day, and I cover this part of paying on the third day because the concepts we've talked about before still apply about searching, about posting, about being active and replying and stuff. But on Facebook, really, the, the right way to use Facebook as a business nowadays is to pay uh, to use Facebook. They have the terms of boost, promote, ads. It's all over the place right here. Promote, manage promotions. Promotions is a keyword for paying to reach people. You might see elsewhere it says boost your post. That's a keyword for paying to have more people view your post. Yeah. So whatever you post on your business page, will people or friends or family see it on your personal page or what? Probably not either. No, I don't know exactly the the whole algorithm or trade secrets, but um, from what I've seen and what I've read, uh, even that, even if you've got friends and family connected, that doesn't guarantee that your stuff is going to show up to them. Because Facebook believes people don't want to see ads, people want to see stuff of friends. Well, people do want to see ads if you pay for it. So even... No, all I'm, all I'm saying is that your business, paying for it, will reach more people. A person doesn't have to pay anything at all, ever, on Facebook. A business is going to pay to reach people, even the friends and family of those I'm connected to. I'm Victor. I have Victor's Bakery. I want my friends on Victor's account to see Victor's Bakery. I have to pay on Victor's Bakery account for that stuff to be visible on my friends' accounts as Victor the person. So, uh, yeah, it is, it is very different. Question? You can, you can like and or share your business post with your personal profile on that and runs that. The other thing, because this annoyed me when I first started the business page, and, and if people go consistently over a three-week period to your business page and like posts, they seem to come up and stick in their feeds. So nobody does it. <clears throat> this is, exactly, this is the, the issue that I had made the note earlier, where when I first created the account, it said, why not let your friends and family know about your business? So uh, I have here, okay, uh, Darlene, Patricia, everyone, you need to know about this. I'm going to click invite. And everyone's going to come to the page and, and give me a courtesy like. Um, but then that doesn't mean that my, my stuff will show up on their feed. Now, I could, as Victor, share the latest sale on my Victor account. And, you know, I go back to my Victor account and then my friends see it here, perhaps. Uh, you know, even this right here where I just posted yesterday, hey everyone, I'm doing episode number 100 of my podcast. No likes. Now, imagine if I'm selling something. The point of this is, are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? Maybe in the beginning and probably not long term. So it doesn't matter that my stuff doesn't go to my friends and family. 
it doesn't even matter that you invite people. That inflates that, I've got 70 likes. How many of those friends and family are buying things? They give you a courtesy like, but that doesn't mean they're going to pull out their wallet. So um, I wouldn't worry about inviting friends and family. I wouldn't worry about sharing your stuff to your own personal profile to have your friends see it. Are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? And probably not. So just as a note here, and then we'll deal with that. Personally and anecdotally, don't invite friends and family to your page. Their like will be hollow, and I don't want to make it sound so harsh, but their like will be hollow. They're not buying anything. Who cares if they liked it? 70 likes doesn't mean anything if I'm not getting 70 sales. And even if I have 1% of 70, let's say one person, is one of my 70 friends buying a family portrait package that I'm selling or a uh, are hiring me as a lawyer no they're not gonna hire me they want that free lawyer advice because I'm family so their life will be hollow unless they are buying you're being too optimistic but yes that, that that could be yeah they could refer me to other people yes but with one dollar, that could be referring me to even more people than relying on the friends and family. And we'll see what that means in a moment. But yes, I don't want to be too cynical. I just have done this for a while, and it doesn't quite work that way. Because it's so easy to click like, it's so easy to click reply, but suddenly the mouse doesn't work when you want to click buy. So um, we'll see how to get around that. Uh, so don't invite friends and family to your page. They're like... Uh, will be hollow, uh, and uh, even if they like, no guarantee that your posts, your business's post, will even show up in their feed. That's the extreme negative aspect. There, to be a little positive, they could then share and reshare and re refer you and such. Yeah, when I started inviting people to start going to my personal contact Say that again? And when you're inviting people to, to go to the business page, mm -hmm. they get to try to go to my personal contact. Yes, exactly. It wants to go to your personal uh, friends and, and family account. Uh, so, you know, from the really cynical point of view, that's just Facebook wanting to get more people involved in Facebook, not exactly necessarily helping you. If, uh, if they looks at your Outlook address book and it sees seven people that are not on Facebook, Facebook will send them a message, hey, Armin is on Facebook, why not join Facebook? So Facebook's just trying to get people on Facebook, not exactly help your business. Maybe they may help you spread the word of your business. Okay, so it all sounds very negative and apocalyptic. Well, this is, again, this is the nature of the double-edged sword of Facebook. People can use it just fine. Businesses have a hurdle, a hurdle that Facebook itself puts, that has put in the last three years or less. It used to be in, in, you know, in the first 10 years of Facebook, I liked or followed a page, I will see their things. Facebook is a company that wants to make money, and it's working for them, so they're going to keep doing what's working, which is to suppress, basically, the posts of a business unless you go into the boosting promoting ad system which sounds so cynical but just like in the real world that billboard is not free that ad in the paper is not free but you're never gonna find a billboard where you can pay one dollar to put your ad up there and I hope you're not paying that person on, that's flipping your sign one dollar so with one dollar at least on all of these networks not just Facebook we can we can check this out so let me show you the system now if you're here in the uh, in the home uh, the page screen we have the ability to start sharing anything we want photos video products coupons whatever and then we have publish but next to it we have boost boost your post to reach more people and you know at a certain point they might even make it say pay to reach more people but right now they have the the synonym boost so I'll explore this in one moment but going into boost gives a whole new screen which I'll look at this in one moment what I want to say is 
I would recommend to craft your post and then publish it and then boost it. Because let's say I'm doing sale this Saturday. And then I'm writing whatever. I'm putting a coupon, I'm putting a link, whatever. I'm creating a post. If I then take a little segue to go to boost, your post has not been published yet. And if your computer crashes, you lose it all. By, by taking a segue to boost, you're, you're, you're spinning plates here. You're juggling. If instead, I first publish this post, it's there, it's set, it's out there. All my zero followers would see it. Or if I had 50 followers, you know, two followers would see it. Um, but it's out there, it's set in stone. Then I would boost it and go through the process that I'm about to show you. If the computer crashes, this is still there on Facebook. A moment ago, if I tried to write the post and boost the post at the same time and it crashes, I'm probably going to lose something, half or all of it. My recommendation, uh, create a post, then publish it, then boost it. This helps prevent disaster. You lose your, your, your post. If it never got published, then uh, it's going to be sort of like in a draft mode, temporary, and it may never actually get published. And uh, the, um, you have to do it again. You have to go back in and write the message again. What, what did I write? I forgot. I have to load up the picture again. Um, so publish it, then boost it. And boosting is like this. Uh, again, this is a fake account, so no harm, no foul. If you're doing this on a real account, you will not be charged until you finally confirm it. But yes, you will be charged to do this. So I'm not asking you to actually do this, but you can get one step before actually doing it. Uh, you create some amazing post. It's still going to be up to you. They'll take as much money as you want to give them, but it's still up to you to have an amazing photo, a relevant link that is not broken, uh, or some sort of advertising that really works. And again, that's hard to teach what works for your business or your, your niche. And as we go through the whole three-month sequence, we'll cover it in different aspects. But let's say I do the boost. I get a brand new screen here where I have on the left audience, budget and duration, and, and tracking and payment. Uh, let me skip down here to first budget. It's saying, OK, with $20, I've I'm estimated to reach 2,000 to 6,000 people. I have zero followers right now. This is telling me at the very minimum, 2,600 people will see my post. That's amazing. I have zero followers. I suddenly sort of have 2,000 followers. Um, it's still up to them that they see this post for them to click like, comment, share, follow, by. So just because it says you're going to reach this number of people doesn't mean you're actually going to make a sale or, or get a call or make a home run or whatever. I can change the budget here and say, OK, well, I want to spend um, $1,000. That'll reach 80,000 people. I have zero followers, but I'll reach 80,000 people. And if you've got a great ad, a great post, it may give you a result. I have, choose your own, start with a dollar, 110 people. Obviously, that's much lower than 80,000. But if I've got zero followers and I'm just getting started, I have a dollar somewhere in the, in the glove box uh, under the carpet. I have a dollar to spend to reach 110 people. That doesn't mean 110 sales. That doesn't mean 110 followers. That doesn't mean anything concretely except that Facebook will show your post to at least 110 people, which people will see which in a moment, but it'll show it at least to these amount of people. They're gonna they're gonna cast the bait. There's still other things to catch the fish, but at least here we have a potential amount of fish.
Question. I've never had this before, but how do they, how does the person see it? Does it go to the email or to their page? Or it goes on their page. Uh, they will see they're logged in, and then they're going to see a message, your message. It's going to say sponsored. It's going to look something like this on their page, either when they're logged in on the computer or if uh, they're on their mobile device. It will look something like that. So it's going to be... No, it'll just integrate it into the stream of what they normally look at. It's noticeable if you also design it noticeably. This is not going to be noticeable to people. They're just going to scroll past it. They didn't notice it. It's how you design it too, yeah. So the mechanical aspect of boosting it is easy to grasp, but then how does it look and what's effective, that's a little harder to teach because it depends on how versed are you in making a graphic or is it the right graphic, the, the photo is blurry, what's my message, I can't spell right, you know, there's all of that that I can't quite teach. But all of this about getting your message out, that's teachable. Okay, the who are these 110 people? Now if I back up, we have an audience. I already had an audience set up, and if you don't have this set up, then it'll be empty here. But I have these audiences. Um, example, group, parents with kids. Uh, I, I'm going to ignore these for the moment. I'm going to say create a new audience. So here then what I get is, OK, I name this. So let's just say uh, test people. Choose gender. So here I can choose male, female. I'm sure this will be changing soon nowadays for the current uh, fluidity of gender debate and such. But at the moment, all. So everyone can see this. But let's say I've got a product that's only for men, only for women, etc. So I can say only women will see this. Um, it'll give me the stats over here in a moment how many I will actually see as I start to focus. But let's say all. OK, ages. 18 and up. Let's say this is a product that uh, my product is a little bit high end. I'm going to be going for 30 year olds and up. You know, I'm looking for people that have a little bit of disposable income, whatever, whatever I kind of figure out. Um, as, as young as 13, again, you have to be at least 13. Maybe I'm selling products just for teens. Okay, 13 to 19, I can do that. So you have this age range 29 and up. Location. So who am I targeting here? Uh, if I'm a local business in California, I probably want to target California. Specifically, I probably want to target San Diego. So my ad about my product can be targeted very specifically even by city. Now, do I mean San Diego, California, San Diego, Texas, San Diego, Venezuela? I mean San Diego, California. OK, so then I've got this little target, 25 mile radius. It'll hit people in Tijuana, and people up to almost Escondido, and people in Hamul. Um, 25 miles or less or more, up to 50. So I can reach people out in the ocean fishing. And I can do more than one place. Let's say I want to target specifically as close to tight as San Diego but also over to uh, Palm Springs. Palm Springs, California. So now my, uh, my ad here, my post, my content, will, uh, will be targeted a little bit more to these two relevant locations. Facebook is global. Doesn't matter. I need it to be local. With boosting, I can target to an audience at a location. I can have as many as I want, but be careful about that because if you try to go to too many places, then you're not you're casting too wide of a net. The fish will get out. Let's say two or three locations if, if it makes sense for your business. It'll also tell you down here. My screen's a little oh here it is. Uh, it'll tell you down here. Your audience size defined is good. Potential, 1.1 million people. Wait, I'm going to get a million customers. No, that just means it's going to cast the net for, a, for those locations with other settings that we've set here to be about approximately a million people. On Facebook would see it as you scroll down. And then we've got here, include people who match at least one of the following. Facebook's been around almost 15 years, and people use it all day long. 
some people are on it all day long and showing that I'm at this movie and I watch this show and I'm doing this and I'm having a good day, I'm having a bad day. People are on Facebook all the time. People are giving Facebook a lot of information, willingly and unwillingly. For a person, sometimes it's a little too obtrusive, intrusive and annoying. As a business, I love that because people are giving away so much information that I can use. I'm a bakery. I'm targeting men and women in San Diego and Palm Springs. And then here, under further demographics, interests, or behaviors, I can target even better. I don't know where to start, so I would select Browse. Then we've got demographics, interests, and behaviors. So as I then further open these things, regarding what's their education level, what's, what are their life events, what kind of parents, what kind of politics, what is their work, let's say education. Um, for specific schools, educational level, I'm looking for those that, that have that are high school grads and uh, in, 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 in a professional degree, whatever. I'm just choosing random things. So I'm, I'm looking for people at these locations with these demographics. This now has dropped down to 170,000. That's not bad at all, of course. A million people, a million customers is great, but it's too big of a, of a net I'm casting. It will tell you here if you get too specific, not enough customers. It will tell you here if you're too wide, too many customers. Anywhere in here is good. I would love to have 170,000 customers. Well, that's 170,000 people could see my post, my terrible misspelled post. So it's still up to me to have a good post, a good picture, a good ad. This will lead the horse to water, but it still needs to drink. So you still have to make your posts and your ads and your links and your content good. Facebook will gladly take your money and show your terrible ad to people, but just like in the real world, that, ad, uh, that billboard company will gladly take your misspelled uh, billboard and put it there for 10 days and you paid $1,000. Uh, they're not going to proofread it. They're not liable for it. So let's say I save that audience. So I've got a brand new audience I'm targeting to test people. And uh, with $1, I'm going to have Facebook uh, help me out and promote me for one day. I can say, OK, I want two weeks of promotion. Then it says, it's a dollar per day, so you need at least $14. So. Facebook will take the budget of $1 and every day use some sort of algorithm, some sort of computer technique, some trade secret to show your this particular post to these particular people in this demographic for two weeks. Where we saw... Uh, it says unavailable for some reason, but that would show how many you're you're gonna reach with this budget for this amount of time and these people. This whole boosting is is the same in all the networks. Boosting in any social network is the process. of defining a target audience based on location, interests, uh, demographics. Again, when you set up a Facebook as a person, it's going to ask you for your high school and your college and where you used to live and your favorite book and all of that. And a lot of people give that away willingly. And that's great for us because then we can target people that are interested in this book, might be interested in this cupcake I'm selling. People in this location of San Diego are interested in my business because I'm on Main Street, San Diego. So I define an audience. I then set a budget from $1 to $1,000 and more. You don't think that McDonald's is spending a million dollars a month on Facebook to have their ads appear to the right people? 
maybe you never see that McDonald's ad because you didn't uh, have your demographics saying, I love McDonald's. But those that have an interest in McDonald's and fast food and such, they're seeing it. And they're reminded, and then they go buy. And then they spend another million next month. So you define who you're trying to target, you define how much you're going to spend, and then you define your duration. Set duration. One day, 14 days, or more. At the moment, it's not exactly automated for it to turn itself on and off on time. You have to still set that, but you can turn them on and off manually. Um, it's not automatic at the moment. We don't exactly know that. This is part of the trade secrets. From what I see, it does go to different people and relevant people. Um, you know, it would be it, ultimately Facebook, like any other company, is trying to make money oftentimes for shareholders. They want to keep their shareholders happy. Uh, by faking this stuff and just taking people's money, that causes problems, negativity, bad press, affects the stock price, affects the stockholders. Now it has happened that it has been revealed, at least once on Facebook, that they've been inflating some of their data, not sending it like to the right people or whatever, but saying, yeah, we had 10,000 video views this month, and actually it was more like 8,000. So they have been caught, and I don't remember the exact numbers and such, but they have been caught inflating some of the stats. I don't think I've seen them that they've said like, well, these I paid so much money and it's only going to the same three people. I don't think that's happened and I don't think they do that. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt because that's a, that's a bad business practice. It hurts the stock price, hurts the shareholders, hurts the economy. So I'm going to believe them that they do kind of spread it out enough into the demographics. Yeah? What satisfies their, their commitment to uh, send out to the target audience? Is it that is part of the trade secrets I wouldn't know exactly but because uh, the studies show that people spend like at, on, at minimum like 20 minutes on Facebook within the time that they're scrolling around looking at stuff at some point my ad will appear in their feed if they fit my demographics if a person just logs in and says hi to two people and logs out, my stuff may not appear. But that's fine. There's 109 other people that it could appear on. So it depends on the person's... You know, Facebook, again, it has so much data on us about our habits. It knows that me, I log in like once a month. So maybe I, I don't really see that much stuff. For those that are on it all day long, like my mom, she's going to see a lot of it because she's on it all day long. And if she has chose, if she has indicated an interest in certain topics, she is more likely to see it. But there's no way to like be sure how many people will see it, when they'll see it, what time of day, and such, because those are all trade secrets, proprietary information. That is some of the trust we have to give them. But we will see in a moment, there is a screen where we can see the, the, um, the effectiveness of it. We will see, did this ad work? How much did I spend? Who, who actually looked at it and such? We'll see that in a moment. That's true. Um, in, this is one of the challenges of real-world media and real-world marketing that, uh, yeah, that you could say, yeah, we mentioned your ad three times, but, you know, mentioned it in the span of one minute, and that's enough to fulfill it. You read, you read the contract, you signed it. And there is no doubt some aspect on that digitally, but because it's digital, it does have the ability to be shared multiple times, and it, it's no skin off their nose to actually program their thing to show it seven times in these seven days. Whereas a person on the, on the radio, they have to physically read the thing, they have to be enthusiastic about it, or, or whatever. So I think so digitally. Yes. Yes, and that's what we see here in terms of these are the certain people, these are the certain days, this is my budget. It all comes back to the budget. The, uh, if you want more time for 
possibility for people to see, you have to spend more. If I only have a dollar to, to spend, well, I really only uh, can have it on this one day, and I don't know how they will show my ad to those supposed 110 people. And um, again, they are trying to run a business, so they're not going to be completely lying about all of that. Um, even if you take 50% of that, okay, 110 people, you actually mean 50? I can live with 50 for $1. And then that gets me one sale, and my sale was two hundred dollars. That dollar was, you know, a thousand times worth it. So it is somewhat of a numbers game. The more you do it, uh, the more you cast the net. Uh, what I will say here is, I, I made up a I made up a demographic. Um, so we'll say here, define a target audience based on location. Uh, in the beginning, or start off with a wide audience I can't tell you what why it means for everyone but start off with maybe both genders before moving on to one maybe starting with you know one city before choosing three maybe kind of have like a wide kind of an audience to first start off with set your budget set duration then check insights which are stats check insights to see how effective your boost was then create another boost with a more defined audience. Right now you might have the inclination, um, I'm going to create an audience, this city, this city, this city, this age, this thing, this, this thing, this, this thing. You get really specific, but you don't know if you're too specific early on. You may be excluding an audience that you didn't even think of. It is often better to start off with a larger bit of an audience and then as we let the campaign run its course and Facebook will give you all of these stats which I'll show you in a moment then it will tell you this was seen mostly by females of this age this was seen mostly mostly by males at this time Facebook will give you all of this great feedback once the ad is over for then you to decide okay on my next one I'm gonna spend five dollars I'm gonna focus on this demographic I have another five dollars in my wallet I'm gonna make another ad at the same time with a different post um, for that other audience uh, let me make a note here only one post can be boosted at a time meaning you can boost seven things at once but I mean that one post is attached to one campaign only one post can be used as a boosted campaign. <clears throat> I cannot use the same one to do A-B testing, which is the fancy way of saying, I'm going to publish this one to a certain audience and the same one to another audience to see how, they're, how, they, how, they, how they differ. Or I'm going to publish this one with a certain wording and this one with another wording of the same thing to see how that works. So uh, you would need different posts for different boostings. And then you can get your insights and decide which work best. When they say that it's seen, that means that it appeared in the What's that? When, when Facebook stats say that the, that the post was seen, it really was just saying it was released to that person's feed. Exactly. They can... They, they, they might have they would count it a person is scrolling by and I don't know how many seconds or milliseconds they count that it scrolled by a person and then they saw it it scrolls into their view enough that they can count it as a view but again views are great but actual clicks or replies or follows or buys are even better and that's still always going to be even if I spend ten thousand dollars it's still going to be to a large degree that some low amount of people will actually buy and that's what happens that's why you see uh, the same commercials over and over and over and over for every single company because now there's so much competition 50 hamburger joints and 70 types of detergent and everyone's competing with each other so the last one you remember might be the, the, the one that you buy so constant ads. Yeah. Is there a suggested time to boost or post your ad? One o'clock, two o'clock, midnight, it's all good. It depends on your own business. That's why you're gonna create the the wide net audience. 
and then I'll show you right here in Insights. Insights will then tell you what is the best time. So if I tell you three o'clock, but your audience isn't 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 uh, isn't up at that time, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter that I said three o'clock. And even if you see an article that says make sure every Monday at uh, nine a.m. you post on Facebook, well, that's going to be great for those that are up at nine a.m. on a Monday at their at their office jobs. But my target audience is not up at nine on a Monday. They they were up all night on the weekend. So I, I can't tell you what time to, is the best time. Facebook will tell you what is the best time after you start to do a little boosting and it can gather data for you to figure out what's best for you. Let's see, set duration, check insight, set duration. OK, and then pay for it. So credit card, debit card, PayPal. They'll, uh, they'll take any form of payments except checks, I guess, or CODs. So um, you have a credit card attached, and I would recommend a credit card rather than a debit card. Credit cards give you more consumer protection than debit cards. You make a purchase with a credit card, the money comes right out of your bank, it's gone, and then you have to fight for it to get it back. Credit cards is fake money, it's credit, so then you have to, you know, you, you file a complaint with your credit card, and then they'll figure things out, and you you get the money back because it's credit it's not real money so I would recommend just in case use a credit card you have more protection CC's credit cards have more protection that works on Facebook and at Target and Walmart and everywhere if you pay with credit cards you have more protection and then the topics of credit and debt and all of that is a little out of our scope but credit cards give you more protection So I have a credit card attached. If I click boost, it would boost it. I won't. Uh, but other things that I see here, um, tracking conversions, Facebook Pixel. Uh, I'll put here optional, set duration, optional, set conversion pixel. Conversion pixel allows Facebook to track a Potential customer, potential customer that exits, that exits Facebook. Facebook by default can tell you a lot of great data of people in Facebook. Um, it can tell you how long they looked at your ad and all that stuff in Facebook. But if you've got a post that says, sale this Saturday, use this coupon code, here's my link, they will leave Facebook to go to my website. And at that point, by default, Facebook cannot track the person there to give you that data. By setting up a conversion pixel, which is code you add to your site that allows Facebook to track people on your site. Allows Facebook to track people on your site. If you set up the conversion pixel, they give you a little piece of code that you have to add to your site. Then Facebook can track people when they left Facebook and went to your site. I have it up there as optional because it is a little technical. You need a website. You need access to be able to edit the code of your website. You need to know what HTML code is of a website. I don't really have time to talk about it. I wouldn't really talk about it in class. It's very technical. You'd have to log into your own site. It gives you the, the steps in there. But for the extra step of Facebook to be able to track people even more, a conversion pixel might be useful to give you back more data to see how things worked. Because again, they can lead the horse to water, but you have to make it drink. You may have had an amazing photo, great text, and a great link, and a great ad, and people clicked it. And they went to your site. But then, for whatever reason, they had a change of heart. Or actually, I need to go pick up the kids. I'll do this later. And then they never do it. Or they say, it's too, more, more expensive than I thought. And then they abandon it. They never actually do the follow-up purchase. Facebook will count it as, well, they clicked your link, and they went to your site. And that's as much as we can do. If you put the conversion pixel, they can further track more and show they, they, uh, they abandoned the process at a certain point. That might give me the insights to say, OK, there's too many steps in my shopping cart. 
I need two steps. Um, so once they leave Facebook, they you, you lose some of the insights and power of, of Facebook, but that's often what you need to do, guide them back to your site for something. Now, as I said, Facebook is starting to add a shopping cart built into Facebook that I need to educate myself more on. And of course, uh, Facebook will give you all of that data because it's in Facebook. There's my credit card built in, and then there is get updates on Messenger. Uh, well, if you've got Messenger on your phone, which is Facebook's extra um, chat app thing, uh, Facebook can send you messages in, in Messenger to keep you up to date and give you tips and ads. Uh, so this is another thing that I think is annoying. Uh, no, I, I get enough messages and texts and stuff. I don't also need Facebook to also send me messages. And they say here, tips and ads and all of that. I can see that in Facebook when I log in. I can read their tips in Facebook. I don't need more stuff cluttering up my inbox and messages. So you can leave that on or off. It doesn't affect you if you turn it off. It doesn't limit your audience or anything. It's just extra messages that they send you. So I would be ready to post. I would be ready to have this message go off to 110 people or so. It's a terrible message, but Facebook would gladly take my dollar. I'm going to cancel. That's the big idea of boosting. You create something, you boost it to pay for it to be viewable for some amount of time, and then you check insights here. <coughs> Thank you. You're going to see here all your stats that tell you days of the week of popularity, how many people saw it, uh, how many people clicked on a like because of it. You have this whole screen here, very powerful, a lot of things to look at, with uh, little info boxes and help and everything. Right now, because I've got a brand new account with nothing to show for it, there's nothing important here to look at. But as you become active on Facebook, even without boosting, this is still valuable here because we see organic and paid. Uh, paid obviously means you paid to boost your post for more people to see it. The opposite of paid is organic in terms of, uh, of uh, marketing, uh, and organic is non-paid. So even if you don't pay for anything, you'll, you should see some stuff here eventually. With, a, with an account that's only three hours old, I don't see anything. But if you've got an account that's already been created before, looking at insights is very important. Because this will tell you last seven days, last 28 days. This will tell you these are the days that people were active. These are the, the number of people you reached. Um, you posted one thing once a week. These are the four things you posted. What type of post? How many people saw it? Engagement? How many people uh, clicked it? How many reactions, comments? Okay, that one, I had never thought of boosting it. That was a popular post I wrote last month. I can still boost it, and it'll kind of you know, republish it for new people. So you can go back to your older posts, if it makes sense, and boost them, give them a new life. New people will see them. And if it worked before that you had some activity for free, organic, it'll probably even work even better with uh, with paid. You can go back and edit the original post. Let's say a month ago, before I learned how to do this, I had something written here. And now a month later, now that I know how to kind of do boosting a little, I can you know, click on any of my previously made posts. Uh, you'll see them back on page, you'll see them in insights. You can go back to any previously made post and on this little menu of dots, edit it, change it, and improve it, and then boost it. But again, once you've boosted one post, you cannot use the same one more than once per, per campaign. You can't use the same one and pay two different amounts to reach two different people. You'd need a different one for different people. Once it ends, you can reuse it and target different people. 
and different budgets, and then check your stats here, your insights, and decide what, what's working. This is the big secret of Facebook, paying to use Facebook. And yeah, it might sound a little anticlimactic and annoying and cynical. They have to pay to reach an audience. It, uh, this is outlandish. This is online. Why does it have, why do I have to pay for it? Everything online is free, isn't it? Well, no, just like in the real world, you, that ad on TV is not free, and that radio ad isn't free, and those flyers you put on their windshields isn't free. You know, you have to pay for this. Question? Uh, with uh, the managers, would you, uh, are you the creators in charge of who can be on there and delete the manager at any time? The admin is the one that can add or delete more managers. And anything besides an admin, which is editor, etc., can do everything of this boosting and stuff except for adding or deleting people. Only a manager that is set to admin can add or delete people. But the other levels, editor and so forth, they can create boosts and posts, but they cannot delete managers or delete the page. Admin. Just the admin, yeah. yeah. So like, can you have like a successful Facebook page like for a business if you don't boost? Like, how do people find you? It doesn't seem to be like Twitter that you can like, you know, search. Exactly. Um, really, the most successful businesses that are doing well nowadays are having to boost mm -hmm. some amount so that's the secret nowadays of Facebook really if you want to be successful and visible on Facebook really you've got to pay but you can start with a dollar mm -hmm. and it does work I've dealt with a variety of clients and and their stats show uh, that they get more views and all of that and clicks when you pay and then we can look at their cash register and see that that week they sold more you know, I deal with restaurants a lot, and I can see that when we do post and we show a great photo of the food, even without a link to the site, a great photo of the food, people remember, oh yeah, that restaurant, that food looks tasty. And we can see in their cash register that week that item sold more because we made a boosting of that picture. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it used to be that you could do the things of, face of Twitter and so forth about searching and liking and replying. Really, Facebook nowadays, you've got to be boosting. And I can do boosting on Twitter. I can go back on Twitter and pay for my tweets to reach more. But really, I think Facebook's the only one that you really need to pay. Mm. On Pinterest and LinkedIn and all of that, you don't really need to pay. You do have to do more work to get viewers and such, which we'll cover. But the shortcut is on all of these networks, you can pay. And they all start very affordably. I'm going to wind down in just a moment. Any other questions about what we've been talking about? There is. When you create a post, um, right here, the default is publish right now. If you click the triangle, you can schedule it so that it can automatically show itself next week. So I could go in one day and say I want to post three times, I can schedule it all at Yeah, once. exactly. It'll automatically post at the day and time that you choose, yeah. You can also save the draft in case you're still crafting it. You can backdate it. Uh, sometimes you want to put a date of last week. And for the purpose of that, it's just like, let's say every Monday, I'm going to post something. I forgot to post it yesterday, Monday. I can go in here and write it and act like I wrote it on Monday for, for whatever purpose. What's that? Yeah. 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 You could do that. Yeah. So uh, when we come back next time, let's see. Next time is already next month. When we come back on uh, March second, it'll be part two of the class. We'll need to register one more time. Every month is a new class, a new registration. We'll do that quickly next time. Remember, if you have friends and family, they are welcome to enroll in this class anytime they want. Next week is going to be day one. Uh, when we start with next week, we're going to start with Pinterest. So we'll, we'll cover Pinterest next time. Question? What's after Pinterest? So my idea is, OK, uh, next week, Pinterest. Then um, on the 9th will be LinkedIn. And then after that will be Instagram. And I have to check my notes what's coming after that. So Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram. What? Did I say two weeks? But it's the 16th.
Let me look at it again. Next week, Friday, Pinterest. Next week, the 9th, LinkedIn. Next week after that, Instagram. That's two weeks, isn't it? Or is that three weeks? Okay, three. Three. Okay, so. So, uh, yeah, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, March 16th. And then I have to check what else is coming. Definitely we'll be covering also Snapchat, um, YouTube, other things. I have to look at my notes. Yeah. I I haven't uh, I haven't looked at them myself. Have you? Yeah. I need to. These things change once in a while, and uh, we need to update ourselves. Yeah. Yep, you go to settings, and then uh, the very last option in general is right there, remove. It'll give you, I believe, two weeks grace period just in case you change your mind. You can log back into the page, and it'll still be there. But if you click remove and don't log back into this page in two weeks, it should be gone. Exactly. No. You're welcome. These notes that I'm writing, I'm going to put them into the network folder right now. If you'd like to get a copy of them, that they will be available. Question? I have a question for yeah. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no possibility like, to show all your posts to all your followers. Like you told me they only show it like to 10% of the followers. So even if you're like boosting, you cannot like boost that all your followers will see your posts? Exactly. That's the annoying part. That's yes. the cynical part. That's like, I'm paying, and it still does not guarantee that all my followers will see it. Th that's... So you cannot really build up followers to Facebook? No, of course of course you can't. But what I'm saying is that you're, you, you have 50 followers, but even if you boost it, it doesn't mean that 50 people will see it. But you will 50 different people that exactly. are not your followers. Not exactly. Those 50 yeah. people, then you would like your followers to see your posts because mm -hmm. they kind of showed some interest in what mm -hmm. you're going to... That's like strange. <laughs> It is, and this is why Facebook, uh, I keep saying why I don't like it, but as, as a business it is very useful. And yes, uh, it doesn't show it to every single person like it used to, and the only thing to say is, you know, com complain to them, which that doesn't do anything, or stop using it, which hurts you. So we have to play by their game in their playground, and if we don't like the rules, we leave the playground. So it's better to have like another social media as well, where you can exactly. build up followers that yeah. will see all your posts. That's right. That's why I, I do cover all of these different ones. Maybe be on Facebook and Twitter, or yeah. maybe be on Facebook and YouTube. So it does help. Last question? I'll turn on the printer one moment, yes.